Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. Glad you could be here. We're glad for those of you that are online. We want you to, uh, the ones that are here, to stand and we'll open our service in prayer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to be in your house again, Father. Lord, we come to lift up praise and honor and glory to your name. Thank you for all the prayers that you've answered this week, Father. Lord, the testimonies and things that you've done, Father. Lord, we come before you and just ask you to bless this service, Lord. May it be a sweet savor in your up to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Praise God. I just came to praise the Lord. Did you come to praise Him tonight? Hallelujah. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just come to thank you, Lord. I just came to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just came to thank you, Lord. I just came to thank your holy name. Oh, I just came to thank you, Lord. I just came to love you, Lord. I just came to love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I just came to love you, Lord. I just came to love his holy name. Oh, I just came to love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I just came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise your holy name. Oh, I just came to praise the Lord. Came to thank you, Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping us. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank His holy name. Oh, I just came to thank the Lord. I came to love you, Lord. Oh, I just came to love the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I just came to love the Lord. Lord, I just came to love His holy name. Oh, I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise. Oh, I just came to praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name oh i just came to praise the lord hallelujah lord we thank you hallelujah for all that you've given and done for us hallelujah praise you father we want to give honor and glory to your name i want to give a testimony if uh, my sister um, texted me and said night before last that a friend of ours uh, her friend has a twin brother, and he was having an active heart attack. And uh, she texted me and said, pray for Terry. And he's in having an active heart attack right now. They're trying to get him to the hospital and um, all of that. So anyway, I started praying, prayed on the phone a few minutes. And uh, I said, well, keep me updated. It was late, about 9.30 or so. And, uh, the next morning, she had texted me and said uh, they were 
stabilizing him overnight and then they were going to send him by helicopter to Nashville, send him on and do a heart cath on him. And I said, oh, I just pray that there's no damage done because that's, that's where the, you know, a lot of the mess comes from first. Anyway, so they uh, called yesterday or called today and said that he had two 95% blockages behind his heart and they went in and did stents on him and he is doing really good and he's going home. And I said, that's a miracle. That is a miracle. And I know it happens every day, but it's, it happened to somebody I know, and it's a miracle. And I praise God for that. So I don't know what his relationship was with God at the time, but I pray that it is increased at this point. <laughs> praise God. So we are children of the King. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm a child of the King And His royal blood Now flows through my veins And I, who was wretched And vile, now can sing Oh, praise God, praise God Oh, I'm a child of the King. Let's sing it again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm a child of the King. And His royal blood now flows through my veins. And I, who was wretched, and poor now can sing oh praise god praise god oh i'm a child of the king oh yes oh yes oh i'm a child of the king and his royal blood now Praise God. And I, while we were going over the songs this afternoon, this evening, I was uh, mentioning about my little dog that's been, she had been sick back at Christmas and with an immune thing that would, something would attack her system. And they kept telling me I had to have her blood tested every other day. And uh, they said to me, well, she's, you know, it's just not, it's just not there. It's just not there. And the Lord gave this to me it just dropped down in my spirit and i know we've all heard it but he said the life is in the blood the life is in the blood and he made that dog just it's my friend and like my little kid so anyway i started declaring over that dog and i'm still praying over her i said lord the life is in the blood and i know that he made us but I know he made that animal too. And I said, Lord, I just thank you that her blood is staying clear. And I haven't had any problems, but I haven't been back. So I'm declaring, I'm declaring healing for the dog and anybody else. So remember that the life is in the blood. Praise God. Hallelujah. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so thrilled with Jesus. He's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus. He satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled with Jesus. For he's the one who makes me whole. I get so thrilled with Jesus. Are you thrilled every moment of the day? 
I get so thrilled with Jesus. He's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus. He satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled with Jesus. For he's the one who makes me whole. We're going to sing it again. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so thrilled with Jesus. He's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus. He satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled with Jesus. For he's the one who makes me whole. Praise God. Yes, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Well, you may be seated. I wouldn't call it crazy believing in <laughs> Jesus. And, uh, you know, my life was uh, at a place when I was a young man and didn't think life was worth living anymore and, and thought more and more about just checking out of this world. And, and uh, I felt like I was trapped in a, a deep, dark pit and no way out. And uh, but then I heard about, heard about Jesus again and uh, heard about him as a young, a young boy but uh, heard about Jesus and how he could give me a brand new life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, behold, the new has come. And, and I heard that God had given me a, a brand new start in life. And, and uh, there wasn't anybody around. It was 1230 at night, knelt down in my living room. And, and I prayed, Lord, I believe that you're, you're the son of God. And you know all the bad things I've been doing. And Lord, I need a new life like that preacher was talking about and I ask that you'd forgive me of my sins come into my heart be my Lord be my Savior and uh, from from that point on God gave me a brand new life and uh, I remember it, it was uh, not too long after that I was in uh, the doctors thought there was something going on with my kidneys and wanted to do this scan and so I uh, went went to the hospital I was waiting and and uh, uh, you know, the Bible says we love because he first loved us. And I was, you know, when Jesus, he, what he'd done in my life, you know, that's, that's why I was serving him. And there's this guy in the, I don't know, in the waiting room and, and I uh, started talking to him about the Lord. And he said, well, what did Jesus ever do for you? And I said, well, uh, besides forgive me of my sins, he, uh, he gave me hope. He gave me joy, gave me a relationship with my, with himself. And, uh, and that guy is got all flustered and ran out the door. <laughs> And, uh, but you know, that's what the Lord did. He, uh, I've, uh, I've let the Lord down from, from time to time over the years, but, uh, he's been faithful and, uh, and, uh, you know, he said in this life, we would have trouble, you know, this, this world is in heaven yet. And, uh, but he's promised to never leave us, never forsake us. And, uh, he's that friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Amen. So. It's, it's crazy not to lean on Jesus, <laughs> crazy not to believe on him. Well, there's a number of prayer needs, and uh, uh, Terry uh, Seckler uh, needs prayer for continued healing. Uh, Pratt, uh, Patty Brennan uh, needs prayer for, um, let's see, bad test results, upcoming appointments, pray for healing. Uh, Kay Bone, she needs uh, prayer. She had um, uh, fallen out of, of bed and, and got hurt. We need to pray for her. Uh, Pastor Keith, uh, he's still undergoing various tests. We need to pray the Lord's touch on him. I, my wife, uh, she's home, not, not feeling well today. And but praise the Lord, Barry uh, was released from the hospital and he didn't have any kind of blockage uh, from a stone or anything, but uh, he does have uh, pancreatitis. And so I told him we'd be praying for him tonight. And then uh, Brandy, who is uh, Carlos's granddaughter, let's see, la the last I check up notice the hemorrhage in the retina and the doctor is concerned and wants her to go uh, to a specialist and so we need to uh, to pray for brandy and um, let's see 
Carlos also wrote patients with high blood pressure, diabetes, or heart disease. And uh, doctors are finding millennials who have had COVID are now being diagnosed with high blood pressure and heart issues. Maybe they just had to go back to work. <laughs> Sorry, bad, <laughs> bad joke. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> If you have a need tonight, God cares, he loves you, he's a personal God, you know, and uh, one, one of the things that, that kept me from giving my life to Jesus was I, I heard, for God so loved the world, you know, God loves all the masses of the world, but what about me, Brett Laszlo, and uh, uh, God got through to, through to me that he, he sees individuals, he's, he's seen, he sees individuals, he knows your need. And uh, so if you have a need tonight, you give that to the Lord. Um, Sandra, as she's needing the touch, she's dealing with migraines too. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> Lord God, thank you, Lord, in this crazy world we live in. God, we're not forgotten by you. Jesus, you said that, Lord, our Father in heaven knows how many hairs we have on our head. Lord, you know everything about our lives. God, you love us. You're concerned. And Jesus, because, Lord, you died for us, Lord, and that veil that separated us from you is ripped in two, God, we can come confidently before you, not because of who we are, but, Lord, who you are and what you've done for us. And, God, thank you for salvation, full and free in Jesus. And, Father, so in, in Jesus' name, we lift up these various needs. We lift up Terry before you and Patty and Kay and Pastor Keith and Barry. Lord, we lift up Brandy before you and, and uh, God, uh, Stacy. Lord, all, all these needs, Lord, nothing is difficult for you. Jesus, your word says that you took those stripes, those whippings on your back, Lord, for our healing. Lord, you are paying for it. You are doing that for us. And we pray, God, your healing grace, Lord, to touch each and every one. Lord, we pray for that, God. Lord, for millennials, God, I know this is a real thing. And uh, Lord, um, we just pray, God, that you'll have mercy and grace, that you'll bring healing. And, and Lord, through this all, that you would be glorified, that you would draw people closer to yourself, God. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord God, we lift up, God, uh, Metropolis before you, Massac County. God, we lift uh, Lord, our country before you, this world. God, we can pray big because, Lord, you are, you are an, an, an omnipresent God. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will just move in the hearts, God, of people. Lord, that you'll open eyes, open hearts, help them to see, Heavenly Father, how much you love them. Lord, the problems of this world are not because of you. God, it's because of sin. It's because of the devil. Lord, uh, people's decisions, God. Lord, we, but God, you are there to intervene. And we pray, Lord, soften hearts, open eyes. And uh, Father, your word says that when one person turns in faith to Christ, turns away from sin and to Christ, all the angels in heaven rejoice. God, over one person, Lord, that's how much you love people. So God, do that work that only you can do, we pray, Father. So Lord, we pray for those watching online, those present here right now, Lord, that they would feel your, your personal touch, Lord, that you would encourage, that you would lift up, that you would bless, that you would help tonight. And we thank you, Father, in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to continue to, to worship the Lord in our, our giving tonight. And uh, if you are visiting with us, don't, don't, ever, you know, don't ever feel you know, your arms being twisted to give. And uh, it's a form of worship. It's a form of thanksgiving. And, uh, and so uh, let's give as unto the Lord tonight. And uh, as um, uh, Beverly and uh, Jay uh, play, play a song, we can uh, bring the offering up here. There's an offering plate back there. And uh, amen. Let's, let's thank the Lord. God, thank you. Thank you, God, that you're a, a, a good God, that you're a giving God. And Lord, you want our trust and hope to be in you. Lord Jesus, you said where our treasure is, that's where our heart is going to be. And so, Lord, we want our heart to be yours. And God, we give tonight, Lord, and for your glory. And we thank you. And we pray, God, build your kingdom and touch lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so 
Thank you, Beverly and Jay, leading us in worship, and praise God. And when the Lord got a hold of my life, I was spending lots of time with God every day, reading the Bible and praying, and God was meeting with me. But you know, it, uh, it didn't take the place going to church and uh, so even though um, I didn't know anybody I was uh, uh, I was 18 at the time and I decided well kind of felt older but I, I'm gonna go to youth group midweek and went to Sunday morning Sunday evening and uh, you just uh, I just couldn't get enough you know God designed church for us to come and be encouraged and lifted up and so praise the Lord glad you're here tonight um, just one um, one announcement uh, Sunday mornings, uh, we started a, a prayer meeting in the conference room, conference room downstairs from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And uh, I talked about Hayden, uh, uh, Charles Hayden Spurgeon's boiler room, and uh, God answers prayer. And uh, so uh, if you can come just a little bit earlier and, and, and pray, pray for uh, God to, to move and have his way in people's lives and uh, it'll, be, it'll be good, 9.30 Sunday mornings, amen. Whoops, here we go, all right. So the, uh, the Bible is um, kind of divided into two parts, isn't it? It's uh, divided in what's called the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, the Old Testament runs from Genesis to Malachi. The New Testament runs from Matthew to, uh, to the uh, book of Revelation. So um, why is it that it's called the Old Testament and the New Testament? What does that mean? Okay, old writings. Okay, and then there's new writings. Okay, William? Okay, so a new, new chapter's begun. Yep, that's true. Okay, anyone else? Okay, new revelation of Christ. Okay, good. Anyone else? What's that? Okay. Oh, the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so Jesus definitely, he was God's fullest revelation to us uh, on earth, and he, and he gave us the Lord's Prayer. His disciples asked him how to, how to pray. And, uh, well, the, the word testament, uh, actually, it's, it means covenant. There was an old covenant, the old covenant God made with people, okay, when he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, and when there's the Ten Commandments, the, the Old Covenant, and then there's a New Covenant. And so really, you know, when we hear Testament, you know, it really doesn't register. So you could even think of it in, a, in even a simpler turn. It was the old agreement between God and people, and now a new agreement between God and people. So We've been uh, going through the, the book of Hebrews, and we're actually on the second half of chapter 8. We're going to go through, uh, through the first half of chapter 10. And, uh, and I believe, well, it's because God's word, you're going to be, be blessed this evening. Let's, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, God, for blessing us with your word. And God, I pray that you'd give us understanding tonight. Holy Spirit, that you would give me grace, Lord, as I teach your word and God, give us grace, Holy Spirit, to hear, to understand, and we thank you in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. So uh, Wednesday, 
has been more Bible study than, than preaching. But um, let's read uh, verses 7 and 8 of chapter 8, and I'm going to have it here on the screen for you. Um, uh, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion for a second one. But finding fault with the people, he says, see the days are coming when the Lord will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Let's see, let me, let me just stop there. So uh, a covenant is an agreement that is binding between two parties. And the fault was not there, that there was a problem with the agreement God set up. And there was definitely not a problem with God and God's end of the bargain. But the fault was with the people. <laughs> Okay, they didn't hold up to their end of the, end of the, the agreement. Basically, uh, the agreement that God made with them was a suzerain, uh, 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 loyal uh, covenant, a royal covenant that was common back then. And basically, God being the king of kings said this, I will provide for you, I will protect you, I am going to give you this wonderful land, and that's my end of the agreement. Your end of the agreement is, here's 10 things you got to keep. Okay, 10 commandments. Okay, um, no other gods besides me. Don't worship idols. Um, uh, honor my name as, don't take my name in vain. Okay, honor it as, as holy. Uh, keep the Sabbath. In other words, you're going to have a day set aside where you're going to spend with me. And you're going to rest and you're going to trust me. Okay. Honor your father and mother, right? Uh, don't steal, don't murder, don't lie, don't covet. I think I covered them all, right? Don't commit adultery. Yeah, got them all. And so God says, you keep that end of the agreement. I'll keep mine. And, and this is how it was back then, wh whatever party breaks their end of the covenant is death. Okay? And what they would do is they would, uh, they would cut an animal in half, and if it was two, human, two people, they would walk between the two animal halves, they would say their end of the bargain, the agreement, and, uh, and, and they're saying, they would say, may I be like this animal if I don't keep my end of the agreement. And so people don't understand when they read the Old Testament, it's like, wow, why was God like wiping these Israels out? Israelites out, you know. Well, they kept breaking the, the covenant. And, uh, and so the fault was not on God's end, it was on the people's end. And it was really sad after, I mean, the Lord had kept his promise to them, brought them from slaves to living in a beautiful, fruitful land. And, uh, and the land back then was not like it is today. You know, you look at like biblical reenactments, uh, you know, uh, and, and they're really filming in Israel, and they're like, that is a horrible piece of land. There's just a bunch of rock with some weeds poking out. <laughs> that's not a real, that's not a land flowing with milk and honey. Well, actually, that part was, uh, was part of the Fertile Crescent, if I'm remembering right. It was a very lush land. The reason why Israel looks like it does today is because of all the sin that they've been doing. And then when the uh, Romans came and uh, wiped them out in 70 AD, they dumped salt everywhere to wreck the land and make it unfruitful. So modern day Israel, they are recovering the land, but it didn't look like that before. It was like good. And um, the, the fruit was, was just amazing. So the Lord decided, I'm going to make a new covenant. The old covenant did not work because of the people, and I'm going to make a new covenant. And uh, let's see, verse 9 says, not like the covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, I showed no concern for them, says the Lord, because they did not continue in the covenant. And so, um, you know, it was, it was amazing when God brought the people out of Egypt. We're talking not only all the plagues that he, he, he totally 
you know, pounce the superpower of the world back then, miraculously divides the Red Sea, brings them out. He's miraculously given them food, miraculously given them water. They could actually see the glory of God every day. A cloud was covering them so that the desert sun, okay, uh, wasn't beaten down on them. Then at night, it was a cloud of fire so they could have light. And, uh, and yet, when they get into the promised land, what do they do? They ditch God for these idols of wood and stone, even as far as sacrificing their own children to these idols. It was just horrible. And so, um, so God says, I showed no concern for them because they did not continue in my covenant. And so the Assyrians came in, wiped them out. The Babylonians came in, wiped them out, took them out of the land. And uh, so... In the next uh, few verses, God describes the new covenant. This is verses 10 to 12. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And each person will not teach his fellow citizen and his brother or sister saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least to the greatest of them. For I will forgive their wrongdoing and I will never remember their sin, uh, never again remember their sins. Isn't that awesome? And so back then the agreement was written on, on stone tablets, right? And I believe that symbolized the hearts of the people. They were stone. And God says, I will take out your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. And when a person comes to Jesus, you know, people are hardened to the Lord. They're like, I don't want to have nothing to do with church. I don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. Don't talk to me about the Bible. And they're hard towards God. And God, I believe ever since we're little, God is working in our lives to bring us to a place where we're open to him. And when we hear about the Lord, uh, Jesus, what he's done for us, and uh, I mean, it's just amazing. The king, God Almighty, stepped down from the throne, took our sins upon himself, and allowed evil men to, to abuse him and, and, and nail him to a cross. And uh, that's how much God loves us. You know, and, uh, uh, and, and he did that for us. And when a person believes that, wow, Jesus loves me, he died for me, he rose from the grave on the third day, and Lord, I'm turning from my sin, I need you in my life, God does a miracle. And it's, it's called being born again. And the Bible says that he takes out our heart of stone and he gives us a, a heart of flesh. In other words, a tender heart towards the Lord. And uh, I don't know about you, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us here, if not all of us here, before you gave your life to the Lord, you were probably like, ah, you know, church is boring, I don't want, you know, things of God are boring. But then once you get saved, now it's like, wow, I can't wait to read the Bible. You know, I can't wait to be in church. I can't wait to spend time with God in prayer because God's giving you a new heart. And uh, the things that I... I, uh, I like to do that were wrong. I didn't want to do those anymore. And the things that I didn't want to do that were right, I wanted to do those. God gives us a new heart. And also the Bible says, uh, that the new covenant, he says, they will all know me. See, before the Israelites, they didn't have a personal relationship with God. Only Moses was blessed to, to be called the friend of God and talk with him face to face. But now, when a person comes to God through Jesus, we get a personal relationship with God. You know, that's, you know, the, the, uh, the children's song, Jesus loves me, this I know. You know, you know Jesus loves me, God loves me. He, I have a personal relationship with him, we, we know him. And it's awesome, and the, and the Bible says that, um, for I will forgive their wrongdoings and And I will never again remember their sins. It's an awesome thing. Like uh, what what happened um, in my life, um, taking God up on his word. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. God really forgave me. 
all the things that I did before Jesus, I didn't feel guilty about that anymore. You know, I didn't, I didn't think of those things anymore because I was forgiven. In fact, I don't know how, about how you felt, but I felt brand new from the inside out. I felt clean. You know, there's self-help books and programs and people can go to counseling and all this stuff and they're trying to, to, get the, to better their lives from the outside in. But Jesus said, clean the, clean the inside of the heart a, a cup and the outside will come clean. And so you get Jesus in your heart, he cleans you up, you're a brand new person on the inside and then God starts working on the outside, Right? Like that song, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Praise the Lord. That's the way God works. He changes us. And so to become a Christian doesn't mean that we're perfect, but it means we're forgiven. We're on our way to heaven. All expenses paid by Jesus. And any bad habits that we had kind of left over, God's going to be working on us. But we're not trying to better ourselves to get God's favor and get heaven but we already got heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's gospel. Uh, Verse 13. By saying a new covenant, he has declared that the first one is obsolete. And what is obsolete and growing old is about to pass away. Obsolete. What do you think of when you think of something is obsolete? Okay, can't get it no more old. (laughs) Now, now wait a minute there, Robert. (laughs) You can get a lot of people mad at you. (laughs) What what are are some items you think of that are obsolete? How how about this one? (laughs) We got, you know, here I got a, a, you know, a, a laptop that doubles as a tablet. We got computer. Ah, oh, <laughs> man, good. You're on, we're on the same wavelength. These old telephones. And I think, Sherman, was it you that said you used to have? Somebody was, t- oh, okay, maybe you're talking party line and I was thinking that. But, uh, yeah, ring, ring, ring. Okay, so here's, here's something else. That's the old Walkman <laughs> cassette player. <laughs> That's old. Let's, oh, if, all right, so if anyone can guess this one, uh, it's going to be amazing. What do you think that is? That's really obsolete. Jay's like something they used on my eye surgery. <laughs> no, not ice. No, not knitting. It's, it's probably only about this big. What's that? No, no, good guesses. Yeah, it's almost like this, almost like a spam key. No, it's an old shoelace hook. You used to hook shoelaces, and I just heard about that in the movie. And I thought, oh, they're never going to find this one, so I Google a shoe, a shoelace hook, and obsolete. We don't use now. We don't even use shoelaces a lot of times. We got Velcro. What's that? Got yeah, got your hand. <laughs> so. Uh, so obsolete means it's not good anymore, right? It's kind of served its purpose, it's done, it's over with, and now we got something new and better, right? Um, I, don't think, I don't think we want to go back to cassettes, right? <laughs> we don't want to go back to the crank telephones. And uh, now, uh, Robert, in Vietnam, didn't you have those Motorola big phones? Didn't they have a crank on them? But they didn't have a crank? I thought they had cranks. Okay. So that was already obsolete. <laughs> it had something. To... Okay. Okay. Well, cool. And uh, now so much is uh, computer chips. And uh, so In verse 13, because God brought in a new covenant through his son, at the time of the writing of the book of Hebrews, the temple was still standing, but it wasn't too many years after that is when the Romans came in 
wiped out the temple, and that old sacrificial system was done and over with. The Jews, they, they still don't sacrifice animals. You know, they, those who hadn't accepted Jesus as their Messiah, they still aren't following the, new, the old covenant. It's, it's gone. It's obsolete. So, um, so does that mean that God no longer is beholden to the Israelites anymore? Uh, he doesn't have any, you know, connection, any, anything with them? Um, well, the, uh, the Israelites had broken God's covenant uh, he made with them, and uh, they rejected the new covenant that God um, offered, has offered them through the Messiah. However, outside of any covenant, God is still faithful to Israel because the promises he made to Abraham. And so that's why he has brought the Israelites out of the nations. He's bringing them back into the land because he is faithful to his promise. They were unfaithful to him, but he is faithful. Now, there are many Jews coming to Jesus today. You all met uh, uh, Doug Carmel. He was with us. He grew up uh, uh, you know, he's not only Jewish by blood, but Jewish uh, uh, by religion. And, uh, and God saved him. God saved him. And, uh, but the Bible says that when Jesus returns, and, uh, and I, I believe it's not too long from now, when Jesus returns, the Bible says in the book of Zechariah that they're going to, they're going to uh, behold uh, the one whom they had pierced and they're going to weep for him as an only son. They're, they are going to weep and mourn that they had rejected their Messiah all these years, that not only did they break the first covenant, but they rejected the new covenant, the Son of God who gave himself for them, and they're going to repent, and as a nation, they're going to receive Jesus as their king. And so, but God is still faithful to Israel. He's still faithful. And uh, so that was... That was chapter 8, and then going into chapter 9, the, uh, the first half, which I'm not going to read, it describes how the, the temple was set up and how the sacrificial system was done and how there was the holy place that the, the, the priest would go into. And then once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. And so it, it explains those things. And within the required reg regulations of the Old Testament, um, there was an illustration that, that God was making. And the Bible says this, the Holy Spirit was making it clear that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed while the uh, tabernacle was still standing. This is a symbol for the present time during which gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the worshiper's conscience. They are physical re regulations and only deal with food, drink, and various washings imposed until the time of the new order. Talking about not new world order like Antichrist stuff that's happening today, but the new order of New Testament, okay, the, the new covenant. And so the Bible says the Holy Spirit was making, making it clear that it wasn't open. Not anybody could go into the presence of God. The presence of God was in the Holy of Holies, and the Jews, being smart, they tied a rope around that high priest's ankle. For real, they did that because if, that, if the high priest went in and he had to sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, and if he wasn't right with God and went into the presence of God, he would have been struck dead. And then everybody would have been standing around. I'm not going in there. You going in there? I'm not going in there. Yeah. And so if he was struck dead, they would just pull him, <laughs> pull him out. <laughs> Next. And, uh, but historically, historically, a high priest was never struck dead. And uh, they never had to do that. But... Uh, so praise the Lord, now though the way is open. Now, I want us to look at chapter 8, verse 13, and compare it with chapter 9, verse 11. Okay, 8, 13 says this, 
By saying a new covenant, he has declared that the first is obsolete, and what is obsolete and growing old is about to pass away. Now this is chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ has appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come in the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. So the old covenant was on earth, it was um, sacrificing animals, it was a tent, and then there was a, t uh, a, a temple made of stone. But Jesus, okay, there was one sacrifice himself. He gave himself, and it was in the temple in heaven. And, uh, and so, praise the Lord, uh, he's brought in the, the, the old covenant, was um, speaking of the, the things that were going to come, Jesus actually brought it, brought it to us. And uh, the Bible says that he entered the most holy place once for all time, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Praise the Lord. When you give your life to Jesus, man, it's eternal. It's eternal. It's done. Jesus, Jesus did it. It's done. And uh, ver okay, verse 15, therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant or a new agreement so that those who are called might receive the promise of, e of the in eternal inheritance because a death has taken place for redemption from transgressions committed under the first, let's see, wait a minute, because a death has taken place for redemption from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. Okay, so uh, let's look at this for a moment. Um, okay, Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. Okay, he's the one who brought it in. Okay, he, between God and us, he brought in a new agreement. Okay, and you know what the agreement is? The agreement is God says, if you will trust that my son gave his life for you, and rose from the dead, if you will trust that and surrender your life to him, that's all you need to do. And what I will do is I will forgive you. I will give you a brand new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you to, to, to serve me. I'll give you eternal life. Praise the Lord. You, you don't have to go to the other place when you die. You got eternal life. You're on your way to heaven. I mean, and the Bible lists so many things. You know, the book of Ephesians, so many lists of benefits in knowing the Lord. And so Jesus did the hard part. He did the hard part. You know, he, he took the punishment for our sins. He died in our place. And, uh, and God says, you, you put your trust in, in my son, and I'll save you, I'll forgive you. It's just so awesome. And, um, and so Jesus, he died for all the sins that were, took place under the old covenant, and uh, now this is important. Um, okay, let me go back. So that those who are called might receive the promise. Jesus died for everybody, but it's not a blank blanket where now, now because Jesus died for everybody, everybody goes to heaven. It's on the stipulation of putting your faith in Christ. And Jesus said, no one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And so it's not an audible voice, but it's God drawing our hearts. It's God opening our ear and understanding to the good news, the gospel. And, and, and so that we can put our faith in Jesus. And, and each and every person who's ever put their faith in Christ, it's because they heard the Father. They heard the Father. And, uh, and yeah, it may have been through a preacher. The Father's voice may have been through a gospel track. It may have been through a Christian television or a book or somebody at work or a family member telling you about Jesus, a friend telling you about Jesus. Excuse me. But, but you were hearing the Father's voice because it, it, you were quickened and you're like, yes, that's true. I need that in my life. I need Jesus. Wow, Jesus died for me. And see, that's, you're, you're hearing the Father's voice. And, uh, and people who don't hear God, they're just going to be like, eh. Okay, so um, let's see. 
chapter 9, verse 16, where a will, okay, talking about a legal will, okay, not like um, strong-willed <laughs> or something, okay, where a will exists, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will is valid only when people die, since it is never in effect while the one who made it is living. So Monday was my mom's birthday, okay, October 2nd is, is, will be the, uh, the year mark when my mom went to be with the Lord. And um, when a person dies, you have to have legal death certificates, don't you? And my, uh, my parents had a, a legal will and uh, created uh, for us kids, but it didn't take place until the death of my mom. And now that will could be enacted. And um, the same with Jesus, um, the new covenant, the new testament, the will could not be valid, could not be good until Jesus died and his blood was shed. And because now he came back to life. <laughs> He's alive, but he had to die first. He had to die first. And so because he died and we know he died, okay, he was dead, 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 right? Three days in a tomb, dead. And, uh, now, now, the, now he brought in the new will, the new covenant, praise the Lord. Um, and this is awesome. Let me, let me go on. Um, he did not do this uh, to offer himself many times as the high priest enters the sanctuary yearly with the blood of another, talking about animals. Otherwise, he, Jesus would have had to suffer many times since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared one time at the end of the ages for the removal of sin by the sacrifice of himself. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. And the Bible says elsewhere, Jesus was paying for the sins of everyone all the way from Cain and Abel all the way to the last person who will live on this earth. And so the Old Testament saints, they were looking forward to Christ, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the crucifixion. We look back. Jesus bore all our sins. He bore it all. He bore it all. And it's hard to imagine because a person might be like, well, you don't know my sin. Jesus bore the sin of the worst person you can think of that ever lived on this earth. The worst person, Jesus bore it all. And if they would have just, if they would have just turned to Christ, God would have forgave them. You know, the difference between Judas and Peter, Judas ran out and hung himself. Jesus was still forgiven people when he was on the cross. What did Peter do when he when he denied the Lord? He went back. He went back. And uh and so Jesus, Jesus died for all of us, praise the Lord, and um, praise God. So uh, a couple verses to note. Um, according to the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. <laughs> Folks, God doesn't forgive us because he's a nice guy and decided to forgive us. The only way anybody is ever forgiven is because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's it. That's it. Now, God, God loved, uh, loved us before we ever knew him. He, he sent his son, but without Jesus dying. And you know what that says? You know, there's people who say, oh, I'll turn my life around. I'll better myself. My good is going to outweigh my bad. And when I stand before God, he said, hey, you did pretty good. It doesn't work that way. Without accepting Jesus, you ain't getting to heaven. You ain't getting to heaven. There ain't no way. It's only by the blood of Jesus that there's forgiveness. And look at this one, the, uh, verse 27. And just as it is appointed for people to die once and after this the judgment. Folks, that's a certainty. You know, um, we've all heard um, that uh, there's two things that are, are certain in life. <laughs> Death and taxes. <laughs> and we know as long as some people are in government, the taxes are even more, more sure. <laughs> but you know what? The Bible says all of us are appointed once to die. We're all going to die. 
the statistics are, are pretty strong. <laughs> now there's only, there's only uh, let's see, uh, Enoch and Elijah are the only two people who missed death, right? God took them to heaven. Otherwise, it's like 99.9999999 all the way down the line. We're all going to die. And not only that is, is that we're going we're to face judgment. In other words, we're going to give an account of our life to God. Nobody else is going to be standing there with you. It's not going to be nobody passing the buck. You know, uh, Adam said, oh, it's the wife's fault. The wife said, oh, it's the devil's fault. Nope, we're all going to stand before God. We all have a part. And, uh, but the Bible says this in verse 28, just as sure as death and taxes and judgment is this, so also Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to bear our sin again, okay, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Isn't that awesome? You know, I like what Billy Graham had to say. He said, you know, I, I believe Jesus is coming back, but the question is, when's he coming back for you? You know, last October 2nd, Jesus came back for my mom. And she was ready. And uh, he's coming back. He's coming back to bring salvation. When he came for my mom, you know, it was, and, and my dad, a year before that, glorious to heaven. And uh, so when he comes back for us, are, are we going to be ready? Are we going to be ready? And uh, so, okay, so that was chapter 8, chapter 9. And um, let's see, let me see how much I got left here. And... Uh, because this all really goes together. Let me, uh, I think, let's see. I'll keep going. Okay, chapter 10, verse, verse 1 says this. Traditionally, okay, traditionally, AG churches usually went from 7 to 8.15, right? <laughs> they did. I grew up 8.15. Got 15 minutes left. <laughs> We did. <laughs> Would you guys go short or long? <laughs> On Wednesday and nine o'clock service? Oh. <laughs> Not this preacher. All right. So since the law was only a shadow of the good things that come and not the reality itself of those things, it can never perfect the worshipers by the same sacrifices they continually offer year after year. Otherwise, would they have stopped being offered since the worshipers purified once for all would no longer have any consciousness of sins? But in the sacrifices, talking about animal sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year after year, for it is impossible for the blood, and bulls and, uh, blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. And so, what God did, the Old Testament was really temporary, and it all stood for what Jesus was going to do for us. And the Bible says it's a shadow of the good things to come. Now, I know I shared this uh, before. When, when I was junior high and high school, there was a, there was a game all us neighborhood uh, kids played, and it was called Kick the Can. Now, there's an old game but we modified it basically it was this it was played it in the dark and uh we had a, a old uh old metal coffee can and it'd be out in the yard and and the person who was it would start counting everybody else would go hide and 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 our property was great you know it was my dad's work barn and trees and ditches and hills and it was really good even the neighbor's yards was was uh, good. So anyway, so you disperse, and then the person who is it had to go find everybody, right? And so if the first person to get tagged, they would be it the next round, but the last person who made it um, either, okay, this is how it worked. If, if let's say you were spotted and you were being chased, if you could outrun the person who was it and kick that can, you were safe. Okay, and sometimes somebody else might be running too, and the first person to kick it, now they just kicked it 50 more feet or whatever it is, and the other person's like, hey, you know. And uh, so it was a lot of fun. 
And, uh, but if you were the, the last person, uh, you, you, you know, you weren't discovered, you're the, you know, you're just a champion. Well, anyway, I learned a, a lot about shadows. And, uh, and so, um, now this is a, a daylight one, but, but at night, and there would be like a, whether it's the moonlight or maybe my dad's barn light, it would be shining a shadow. Okay, it would be dark, but there's a shadow. I could lay right down in the shadow of that tree, and that person, you just got to be still and don't chicken out, and the person would walk right past you. And uh, the shadow. <laughs> and so I was laying in the shadow of the tree, right? It wasn't the tree, it was a shadow. And I also, uh, I would keep an eye out on the shadows because I might not see the person come, and I might not hear him, but if I see the shadow, I know the person is close by. The person is coming. And so... When, uh, when God says that the, uh, the, the, the law, the old covenant, the sacrifices was a shadow of the good things, it, God was basically telling his people, it's coming. The promise is coming. The good things are coming. It's on the way. Praise the Lord. And uh, so the sacrifices prescribed by the law uh, prefigured Christ's ultimate sacrifice. They were repeated year after year, and it reminded the people of their sins. Well, let me ask you, when we, when we have communion, okay, when we have communion, what do you think of? Okay, you think of Jesus dying on the cross for your sins? Anyone else who have communion, what do you think of? We're thinking good things, aren't we? We're, this is, Jesus loved me. He, he died, he gave his body for me. He gave his blood for me. We're celebrating, right? God gave me eternal life through the sacrifice of Jesus. Well, you know what? When, when the Israelites, whenever the high priest, once a year on the day of atonement, would sacrifice an animal, they weren't, they weren't thinking good thoughts. They're thinking, oh man, they're thinking of their sins. They're thinking of the bad things they did. It was a reminder of their sins, but communion is a reminder of God's love for us and forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Now, all of us can remember the things we did wrong, right? If we sat down, we could remember them, but we don't feel guilty anymore, right? We don't, because God took away our sin. He took away our guilt. And you know what? I'm going to, um, let me... Uh, uh, skip on for time's sake. If we were to read verses 11 to 14, it talks about the priests were standing day after day making the sacrifices, where Jesus, he had one time sacrifice and he sat down because it's done. It's done. His work is done. Praise the Lord. He, he, the work for our salvation is done. Um, let's see. Let's see, let me, let me go down to verse 17. I'm, I'm at the end, I'm just gonna close. I wanna skip through a lot because all you never went to 815 growing up. <laughs> he says, and I will, this is the new covenant and I will never, uh, let's see here, right? He says, this is the covenant I will may, make with them after those days, the Lord says, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds and I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts. Praise the Lord. And then verse 18, now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. You know, Jesus, when, um, let's see, did I put this in there? Yes, I did. When Jesus, let's see, once for all, let's see, let me go on. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he's on the cross, he said, it is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus said, it's finished. There's nothing more he could do, and there's nothing more we can do. We can't be, ever be good enough. We can't do good enough, enough good works and giving an, enough money and doing this and that. It's finished. It's done. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. 
It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jay, can you come to the keyboard and, and maybe you, you want to just play Amazing Grace or, or whatever, whatever you'd like? The covenant, praise the Lord, that God has for us is, you know, praise the Lord that you didn't have to come to church with, um, with a cattle car. <laughs> and and we're, we're offering sacrifices and, you know, spilling the blood of bulls and goats and, and all those things. Oh, pastor, you know, I, I, uh, I wronged my neighbor. Here, I'm, I'm bringing a sheep. <laughs> You know, we don't do that anymore. Praise the Lord. All the, the difficult rules and regulations that, that God had on the, on the people, we're free because God gives us a new heart. He gives us a new heart. And um, so with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to ask you, have you taken God up on the greatest offer that was ever made? And that offer is, I will give you heaven as a free gift. I will forgive you all of your sins, no matter how great or small they are, no matter what your motive, no matter what harm you've done to other people. I will absolutely 100% forgive you. I will adopt you into my family and I'll give you a heart that wants to do good, who wants to do right and serve me. I'll give you eternal life as a free gift. But this is what you have to do. You have to be willing to humble yourself before my son, turn your back on your sins. And you might be saying, well, there's sins I'm addicted to. Well, Jesus is saying, you just, you just turn to me and trust me and I'll take care of that. But you, so if you will humble yourself, put your faith in God's son and ask him to forgive you and invite him to be the Lord of your life, God will give you all that in the new covenant. And I haven't even spoken of everything. Precious Lord, God, I thank you I thank you for the truth, your word. God, I thank you, Lord, you changed my life. God, you, you took me off of, a, from a path of destruction and darkness and despair and hopelessness. And God, you lifted me out of that. It was you, God, and you gave me hope. You gave me a future. You gave me a relationship with you. God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you that you're here tonight. God, there, there may be those hearing this word for the first time in person or maybe hearing online, Lord, right now. And God, you are holding out the greatest gift ever. You're holding out the greatest gift. <clears throat> if you will be willing to humble yourself and confess your need of my son and ask him to forgive you and to come into your heart and life and be your savior, I will adopt you into my family. I will forgive you. I will help you. I will give you grace in your life. I'll give you eternal life in heaven as your home. That's you. You need Jesus tonight. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now. Anyone else? You need Jesus. You need Jesus. This is not joining the church. This is a transaction between you and God Almighty. He loves you. He loves you. Anyone else, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Precious Jesus. You know, wh whether you raised your hand or not, if you need Jesus, you haven't taken God up on his free gift, God's saying, you come on forward. Just come on forward. I'm going to pray with you and you're going to walk out of here a new person. Not on my word, but on God's word. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, as many as received him, this is John chapter 1, as many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. That is so awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So you're here tonight. You need Jesus. Come on forward. Come on forward. You need Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're online and you're saying, I can't get to the front of the church, Pastor, well, you know what? You just, um, 
you just pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart, and God will do that work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we stand before you, and, and God, our lives are bare before you. God, we can hide our sin, our faults, our failings from others. We can even deceive ourselves. But God, God, we can't deceive you. Lord, you see right through us. You know everything about us. And Lord, Lord, in spite of the ugliness of our sin, Jesus, out of love, you said, no man takes my life from me, but I lay it down. Lord, you took our sins, our shame, the, the, the evil in our lives. You took it upon yourself, Lord, so that we didn't have to bear it, so that we could be set free, so that we could be cleansed and, and be holy and pure in your sight, not because of our goodness, Lord, but because of your blood, your sacrifice for us. And Lord, right now, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would forgive us. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Lord, forgive me for my sin. Lord, right now I bow my heart to you, Lord, my life. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. I believe that you are the Son of God and you died for me. Jesus, I believe that because you are Lord, death could not keep you in its grasp. But Lord, you rose from the grave on that Easter morning. Jesus, forgive me. And Lord, right now I turn from my sin and Lord, with the understanding that the things I am addicted to, the things I can't shake myself, Lord Jesus, you're going to set me free. God, I thank you for that. And Lord, I open my heart to you and I pray, Jesus, come into my heart, sit on the throne of my heart, be the Lord of my life and give me grace to serve you all the days of my life. Lord, I pray for that. God, thank you for hearing my prayer. For your word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus, you said, all who come to you, you will in no wise cast out. You'll never turn away. So God, we thank you for forgiveness. We thank you right now in Jesus' name for salvation. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, that not only do we have to believe, but we need to confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord. Folks, you got to humble yourself. When I humbled myself before the Lord and knelt, knelt before God, he heard my prayer and I could see small changes in my life. But when I actually told somebody that I gave my life to Jesus, that's when God showed up big time. And, and so he was not ashamed to hang for you naked on a cross. And if we can't confess that we've given our lives to him, we're not, we're not worthy of him, really. You know, we need to confess to somebody. So if you prayed tonight or maybe you're online and, and you prayed and, you know, maybe you need to text somebody or phone somebody or tell the person next to you, you prayed tonight, you didn't come to the altar. You know what? I didn't answer the altar call either when the preacher had, I went, I waited till I got home and knelt, you know, but you know what? I needed to tell someone and you tell someone, you tell someone. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for our time together tonight. And uh, Lord, I pray your blessing on us as we go and, and just um, Lord, be glorified through our hearts, through our lives. The rest of this week, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's 8.15. God bless you and uh, have a good rest of the week.